Hi, I'm Phil Needham with Needham Ag Technologies and today we're going to talk about when you should consider replacing the disc blades on a John Deere drill or air seeder. And the first thing we need to point out is that a new disc on a John Deere drill or air seeder is new at 18 inches in diameter. So we'd encourage you to remove one or a couple of your discs off your drill to get good measurements. This one measures 17 and a sixteenth of an inch and it doesn't look that worn until you measure it or you compare it to a new one and you can immediately see you've almost lost an inch remember a new one's new at 18 this is 17 and a sixteenth so it needs to be replaced once they reach about 17 inches in diameter the bevel starts to disappear and that blade gets proportionately wider very very quickly unless you've got that sharp cutting edge on the outside of the disc it's not going to cut through heavy tough residue and it's going to hairpin so your money ahead replacing the disc blades when they get down to 17 inches the only exception is if you're working a lot in rocky areas hard rocks like granite there's some customers of ours in South Dakota and North Dakota and New Zealand that are farming on granite rocks that are very hard obviously and they tend to dull the blade much faster. So look at the outside of the disc blade. If the outside of the disc blade starts to become dull before it reaches 17 inches, it's not going to cut and it needs to be replaced. The other observa observation I'm going to add is growers often ask, how long do a set of seed boots last? And my common response is, how religiously do you replace your disc blades? Because if you let your disc blades get less than 17, the seed boots are going to wear significantly faster compared to a person that maintains his disc blades and replaces them when, when they get down to about 17 inches in diameter. Needham Ag is now selling Forge Dino disc blades and we have a separate video on, on YouTube. If you type in Needham Ag disc blades, you'll see a video that talks about the benefits of the Forge Dino disc blades and some of the testing we did to compare, compare the Forge Dino disc blades to some of the other brands on the market showing how much better they are. Before we move on, we're going to talk about how to install the disc blades on a 50 series and a 60 and 90 series single disc opener. So on a 60 and 90 series opener, which is what this is, obviously you have to remove the gauge wheel to be able to access the disc blade and to remove the, the nuts off the bolts. The next thing we'd encourage you to do is to remove the firming wheel. You don't have to, but it's worth the time. It makes it much easier removing the disc and putting the new disc back on. It's also a benefit to raise the closing wheel arm slightly. If you can put a block of wood underneath it or a spacer, anything safe to hold that closing wheel arm up, maybe two or three inches at the back, it makes the removal and installation of the new disc blade much easier. Oftentimes getting the old disc blade off is pretty easy because in many instances it's, it's lost an inch off diameter and it comes off but I'm going to show you how to remove a new disc blade and how to put a new disc blade back on making sure the straight side is towards the gauge wheel the beveled side needs to go towards the seed boot so straight side against the gauge wheel the other thing that makes it easier is adjusting your depth to the shallowest position which angles this arm that the gauge wheel mounts to as far backwards as possible. So that's how we install the disc blade on a 60 and a 90 series John Deere opener. So if you have a 50 series opener such as a 750 or an 1850 the same four principles apply as what we just showed you with the 60 and 90 series openers. Number one, obviously remove your gauge wheel. You have to remove the gauge wheel to get the disc off and obviously the bolts out. Number two, it's preferable to remove the firming wheel. Okay, Then raise the closing wheel arm at least two or three inches safely with a block of wood or have somebody hold it up. Lastly, certainly not least, set your depth to the shallowest position which angles the arm that the gauge wheel mounts to as far backwards as possible. These four steps will allow you to remove 
and install the new disc blade as we're showing here back onto the 50 series opener. We really encourage you not to remove the arm that the gauge wheel mounts to because some people put it back on the wrong spline. It's on a spline shaft. So if you do remove the arm to tension the bearings, make sure you put it back on the same splines. Lastly, always make sure you put the straight, non-beveled side towards the gauge wheel as shown here. So thanks for watching this video. Be sure and check out the Forge to Know disc blades that Needamag is now selling. You can visit our website at needamag.com or you can look at the video on the Forge to Know disc blades by typing Needham Ag disc blades into YouTube or you can subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.